like, am I gonna have to close down? Like, is this not, am I just gonna be a cup seller at this point? Here is my first vendor show experience. If you have not done markets and you are um, needing that income because you're not getting it from online sales, absolutely right now find a market. For the whole week before leading up to it, I was in 100% regret mode. I had my Amazon cart filled up to like a thousand dollars. <laughs> so grand total of $1,545.83 for a two day market from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. I almost quit on us. I don't want to gatekeep so if you were wondering this is the apple butter festival in oxford ohio i think most of you probably got that when you saw my shirts that said apple butter festival oxford ohio but i know like that's a detail i probably wouldn't pay too much attention to so um if any of you have crafts or uh booths you want to set up for it and you live in the area and you have stuff you think would sell to college students and parents uh it's a great show i highly recommend it and if you do sign up for it make sure you say hello to me uh next year because i will be there good morning it is the day after the festival i slept so good last night i didn't even wake up once to pee which is extremely rare um, I thought while well, I am trying to put back together my office that is destroyed right now because I just unloaded my car and everything was destroyed pre-festival anyways because I was like frantic getting things ready. Um, I thought I would chit chat with you and let you know kind of like my experience and thoughts like after thoughts and pre-thoughts too on my first market. Um, so I will not lie to you. I'm always extremely open and honest with things that's like one of my the good qualities about me but also a flaw because I don't have that like filter as in um I don't usually fluff things and I'm very honest even when that makes me look bad so uh yeah if you are someone that doesn't appreciate that you might not appreciate me but and not in like a, I'm honest like to offend people no I'm honest like I'm offensive to myself if that makes sense like I'm I don't really know how to explain it I'm sensitive to other people's feelings but I'm not sensitive to my own so when I'm honest with you about myself it's not always like <laughs> rainbows and sunshine anyways so before the festival like the night before actually the whole week before leading up to it I was in a hundred percent regret mode I was like, why am I doing this? Um, I was already feeling super down about, these are just blanks that I was gonna embroider but just didn't have time to, um, but now I can also for something else. I was super down about just my 
what I'm doing in general. Thinking that this was a failure already. Oh my goodness. See, this is why, why I'm using a Halloween bucket as a tripod. I have a tripod. This happens every time. It's my fault if my camera breaks. Um, but just feeling like what I'm doing isn't going to work. Feeling like a failure. Like I just wasted so much money investing in myself when I don't think what I have is what people want. And that's mainly because I am being, I'm successful right now with cups. My ghost cups are what people are buying and people are buying them. Like I am so grateful that they are loved because I love it. I'm using one right now. Uh, but my clothing, which I didn't start with cups, I started, and I say I started, I started like a month and a half ago. I started with clothes because like that's what I really love. I love cozy sweaters, t-shirts. That's me. Um, I love this too, but no one's buying that. They are literally only buying ghost cups. If you follow my TikTok or my YouTube, I do uh, my packing orders with you. It is only ghost cups. I've had one order of a Motherhood University sweatshirt. Actually, uh, this is a thrifted sweater, but like my non-thrifted gray hands of it. I'm gonna come off new colors, by the way. That's the only thing that's sold. <laughs> so I'm going to just be like, oh my gosh. I ordered 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 48 glasses for the boot cups. And I ordered all of the gang sheets to do the stickers. Out of all those glasses, 12 of them came in that were usable. I had to return all the others. So I went into the festival with a fourth of the stock that I intended to. And I was thinking like, I am not even gonna make my money back for going. And that was $60. And the festival was 34 minutes away from where I live. Um, and I was like, this is gonna be a disaster. Luckily, my mom was there helping me, so I didn't have to do it by myself. Um, but yeah, I just was the whole week in regret mode. So, going into it, that's probably not the best mindset to have. But I also didn't, on the other end, want to have the mindset where I'm like, this is gonna go great and I'm gonna sell so much and this is gonna be perfect like you can't have that mindset either because then you're gonna be completely defeated so whether it's right or wrong I went in with a really negative um, mindset <laughs> and then the festival day happened so here's what I'm gonna give you advice on if you are starting your very first festival and it's the advice I had to keep giving myself I researched so much other youtubers and what they did for their displays and what they had for it. And I'm not kidding you. I had my Amazon cart filled up to like a thousand dollars. And obviously I took a step back and was like, whoa there, Nelly. You cannot buy all of this stuff, especially when you're already thinking you're not going to make money. So I'm like, you got to utilize what you have, babe. Uh, so I went through that Amazon cart and I was like, is this necessary? And 90% of it was a delete, save for later, and uh, no. So what I bought specifically for the show is a tent because it was an outdoor event and you never know what the weather is going to be like. So I ordered a tent. I ordered it with sides because I heard that was very necessary. I am cheap but also broke so i couldn't get like the fancy 250 dollars tent you guys saw i bought a 50 dollars walmart one thinking oh my gosh i bought i had the, the best deal ever and then it came in and i did not realize it was not a pop-up tent it was a screw this together tent which would have taken me hours which as you know if you have to get there early or even for a setup you only have a small window and um, that was a no-no. So I sent that back. I just got the refund for it. And then I ordered the second cheapest option. And that was from Amazon. And it was $150. I think with tax, I spent like $170-ish. Um, and I don't love that tent. But it worked. For what it is, it worked. And I will keep it 
there it came with a hole in the top I'm gonna duct tape that and it's just it is what it is so I had to buy a tent I had to buy I didn't have to but like I bought bags to give to people so they are over here I just bought paper bags I got the wrong size these are small to put sweatshirts in that I had to do my like finest tightest roll of the sweater to stuff that in there but it worked I bought a hundred of them I only have like 12 left so that was a good purchase next time I am gonna go a size up these would be good for t-shirts so maybe I'll get one of the they make them where you can get a variety size um, I tried getting rid of as, as much stickers as I could I just put them on the bags I actually put my chunky B stickers to brand the bags and um, then I forgot to take the stickers with me but that's I guess okay because I had these and you guys know um, I've mentioned it before, I hate these stickers. They're really thin and I hate them. Uh, and then I got tissue paper, not a necessary expense, but for me, I, like, I wanted to make people feel like they were special and getting something really nice because it is nice. And I, I don't know, I just feel like the vibe of how they feel after making the purchase is equally as important as um, them deciding to purchase. So. I got tissue paper. I put one piece of tissue paper in each bag. And this was not a big expense. This was seven dollars for like a hundred pieces. And um perfect. So that is is that all the items? Oh, I also ordered a square reader, which is free, but um I mean you obviously pay a percentage. I think it's like two point something percent of each sale. That came in. I will go into details of price, but that came in um so extremely handy and important it's if you are going to a festival you have to get a card reader you just have to if you want to make the most money um and then other than that i uh you might need to buy sand to put in you're gonna need bags to weigh down your tent so like my tent came with bags and most people buy sand or rocks to put in. I am fortunate that my yard is filled with rocks. So uh, my mom and I just went around and picked rocks uh, for about 20 minutes and filled the bags up, uh, which was great. You could also use, I've seen people use weights, but you're gonna need something to weigh your tent down um, because it will blow away. And speaking from my experience at the festival where it was 26 mile per hour winds and cold, they were necessary. They were necessary. I did also go to the Dollar Tree and buy some size tags, which is helpful mainly for myself um, because I had my organizer, I brought it with me. So I need to backtrack here. Uh, I wanted to buy a bunch of clothing racks. You guys know I have my pink clothing rack right now, it's in my mom's car. Um, but I wanted to buy some like a little more portable ones that fold up to take with me and I had those in my cart and it was gonna be like $70 for two like bamboo ones. Um, I'm glad I didn't buy them because one, I don't think that they would have been necessary <laughs> uh, because what I ended up doing is to save money, I obviously utilized what I had. I just unscrewed uh, the base of my rack and put it in my mom's car um, so it would fit and that's not a big deal. You just have to bring your toolkits with you just to like screw it back in and actually I didn't end up screwing it back in. It was 30th as it was. But um, I just put one of each item on the clothing rack to display it. And then I had my organizer, which I was not going to bring it, but I needed to because I knew because I wasn't buying the things that I had intended. I didn't have enough like surface space. Um, I brought my organizer, which is great because it, like, it breaks apart. And I um, used these Dollar Tree clothing tags um, and marked like the rows of like medium, large, extra large, 2x, blah, blah, blah. So they would look and find something on the rack and then they would go or I would go to the organizer and find their size. So it was perfect. I actually think I will continue doing that system, um, especially because then it doesn't overwhelm them looking at all the clothes. They could just focus on the one clothing rack and then I can go into my um, bin to find it. So I'm going to repeat that. I did buy a sign. So where is that sucker? This has my YouTube, my Etsy, my store name. I had it inside the tent. I was gonna put it on the outside, um, but because it was so windy, I didn't trust it, so I put it on the inside. Um, and I actually had, there's a little boy at one point that came up and took a photo of it, so I don't know if he was doing that for his mom or something, um, 
but just having a sign just makes you look a little more professional so i definitely recommend this i got a six foot one i think at some point i'll get a 10 foot one that goes across the outside then i can keep this one on the inside but this was half off on tiktok shop because it was my first tiktok shop order so they give you deals and discounts um but under I will I will link that below the person I bought it from. Um, I think they're like the biggest person on TikTok that sells vinyl banners. So you probably have heard of them before if you're um, in the market business. I did buy I bought risers for my cups, which I don't love them, so I'm not gonna recommend them to you. But um, just having that different levels for like creating visual effects with your eyes, so people are invested in like looking around. Um, it's just more appealing and, and it is, I think, I don't know if I'm going to immediately buy something to have a prettier display, but because of the wind, it kept like shifting and making me so nervous. I didn't break any glasses and none of, actually it fell off once, but it wasn't the riser's fault is the, um, canopy walls were so stupid and like cheap. They kept blowing in because the belt, they had belt know why the canopy didn't have ties to like tie it up it had a velcro and the velcro was not sticking so yeah not the risers well. the risers just look a little cheap to me um and it's because they were i think they were like seven bucks for a pack of six here here's an example this is what i bought and they came in three different sizes tiny medium large the large ones i didn't even use so they did actually keep falling over so um and i just realized that <laughs> the paper was not off so cool anyways yeah this is what it's supposed to look like so let's go into because I think that's everything I bought yeah that is everything that I purchased for the thing and other than that I just utilized what I had in my room already so festival started immediately the first five minutes I sold three sweatshirts um, one of the ladies haggled me, which she was the only person in the entire event that haggled me, uh, because I just don't think it's like appropriate of those things. But, um, me being me, I was like, I will give you $2 off <laughs> because I was already again going into it being like, this is going to be so unsuccessful. I will, uh, take a win as a win. So, um, they got my three exclusive festival designs, which... Uh, I do recommend that. I recommend you having something exclusive to the festival that you're doing or the town that you're doing. I learned this off of, if I can, I will link her below. I forget her name, but she sells candles um, and she makes her own clothes too. But she does exclusives and said that that's like one of her like top sellers. So I won, I did two exclusives. Next time I only do one, so don't do too much. Um, that is one of the lessons I learned. But uh, my exclusive adult sweatshirts for the Apple Butter Festival all sold out. Um, I think the last two hours of day two is when my very last sweater sweatshirt sold out. And that very last sweatshirt is the only one I marked down to just get rid of it. Um, I marked it, it was $20 for the sweatshirt, and I marked it down to $12, I believe. And it was a 3X. Um, I made too many 3Xs. And it was a, a little girl, not a little girl, but like a little teenager. No, not, I think she was in college, doesn't matter. Um, but she was not a 3X, she bought it. She's like, I don't care what size it is, I just want it. Um, and I was like, great. <laughs> so that sold out. I made toddler ones that I only sold two of. I think I only made 10 total, but I have eight now, which is fine because I'm going back next year for sure. Um, so I'll just have it in storage until then and then just try to sell them. I probably won't do any or maybe just like one of each size next year, like where I have like five. I don't know. I don't know. Um, the adult ones for this specific festival, although it was family oriented, it was a hundred percent, um, more college kids and their parents that came because, well, you know what, I'm going to skip why, but that was the demographic. And, um, although there were kids there, they just weren't like parents weren't buying them stuff. Um, they were buying <laughs> themselves the stuff. So yeah, I also made the second version is I made. Um, the town it was in, I made an exclusive shirt for it, and I only sold two of those. I think it's really cute, though. I'm going to do more festivals there and more 
I might even do some other markets there. So I'm gonna keep those in storage and just pull them out when I do, because they're so cute. And I had a couple college students buying them and everyone that saw it, like, thought it was affordable. So I didn't sell a single kid version of that though. So I'm gonna have to still continue trying to sell those. Um, so I know in the future at this market, I'm not gonna focus on kid stuff. Um, the matchy matchy wasn't working, but for college wear, absolutely. Uh, specifically well no I actually had quite a decent amount of guys buying my stuff and a lot of it's not gender neutral and they still wear so a win is a win again I might do a couple more like um more masculine pieces though when I started this channel I wanted everything to be gender gender neutral but as I started designing I was like mm, I really like feminine stuff too <laughs> even though you like rarely see me in feminine stuff I like making <laughs> and by that I mean I just wear like uh, black tank tops and leggings like workout wear so like to me that's not feminine but anyways um yeah the first five minutes was wonderful and then from there it was so steady um I could not have asked for a better first market I one the people were awesome uh it was in a college like university town so I knew what, I was hoping I would get those people in here because my stuff is very much uh I feel like that's it like one 16 to 40 30 something year olds like that's the vibe um and I would love to make that like older and younger because obviously I have a toddler and I am in my like mid 30s almost now <laughs> so uh, I'm sure my style will adapt and change, but I'm still going to be making those cutesy ones too. Even with the weather being nasty, cold, and windy, there was a lot of foot traffic. And I heard it wasn't as um, great as the years prior, and to me it was great because my tent was consistently full. Like, it, whenever we got lunch, I barely eat anything, and I ha kept having to put it down and, like, check people out or, like, answer questions, and um, everyone was super friendly. It was wonderfully like timed up with parent week in there. So there were a bunch of college students with their parents and their parents were buying them stuff and it was like cha-ching cha-ching with the parents' wallets. Um, let me go into the breakdown of what I made. So, and I know this, I watched Brenna Emman Co. And I know on her channel, she gets some hate from people when she shares prices, but for me, um, I think that's super helpful because like she shows you the bad markets and she shows you the really good markets and it's not like she's bragging where she's like, oh, I made like $5,000 or whatever. Um, no, she's just giving you like realistic, this is what I made. Um, but this is not the expectation every time. So that is what I'm going to do because I know I'm going to have worse markets than this. This is just like me on a high for my first market. Okay, day one, cash sales, I made $337 in cash. Okay, here's what I mean by you need to have a credit card because I made $511.20 with credit cards because... Almost all the people that paid with card did not have cash to pay. Um, so if I would not have my card reader, this would not have been like a crazy good market. So day one, I made $848.27. I spent $20 of that on food for myself and my mom. Wonderful. Day one, I was like, you know what? If I make nothing Sunday, I don't even care. This was worth it. And I told that to the event coordinator that came by. I was like, anything day two is just going to be a bonus to me. Like, please have me back next year. And he was like, you're already on the list. I'm like, oh, wonderful. Day two. So day two, although it was l like five miles per hour less windy, it was like five degrees colder and less sunshine. So it was a little more... I thought it was a better day weather-wise, but everyone else was like, this is a worse day weather-wise. Um, I just, that wind was like freaking me out so much. Cause, like the whole day I was constantly looking in the glasses being like, are they okay? Um, day two, I had $323 cash, which is like almost the exact same as day one. Um, and credit card, I had $374.56 of credit card. I made a total of 
$697.56 day two, which is not like I was expecting way worse because there were like less people for sure there. Um, so it, I ended up spending 90, hear me out, I spent $91 on what I call food and stuff. So um, I bought my mom and I lunch and like kettle corn and then I bought a couple snackies. <laughs> but then I went around because, okay, that morning before the festival I had already made like 30 something dollars because other vin like another vendor um i forget her name i have her business card so i'll share with like what i got and like their names but she came in and bought stuff from me and i was like i want to go because i saw her give i guess our my neighbor had bought something from her the day before and she personalized like the little kid's name on the blanket and um so i had met her and she was so sweet and I was like, I'm gonna come around to your like tent and see what you have. Cause I knew she had stuff for um, babies. So I ended up buying something from her. And then I found another lady that made these little crochet baskets and they were so cute. And so I bought three baskets from her. So I, yeah, I spent $91, um, worth it. <laughs> so grand total of $1,545.83 for a two day market from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. Um, again, I think it was all about the demographics there. I had college age students and their parents because it was parent weekend. It was family weekend. And the event coordinator said they do that specifically on purpose every year. And so I'm like, I need to come every year then. <laughs> so that is that. I literally went in thinking if I I, I told you guys, if I even sell a few things, it will be worth it. But here's where I needed this market more than ever. Um, because I was already thinking, like, am I going to have to close down? Like, is this not, am I just going to be a cup seller at this point? Um, should I quit on clothes? I had every single person that walked by, because I had my designs up on the outside of my tent too because day two the cup there was a cup vendor next to me a sublimation like tumbler cup vendor did not come back so i had this open space that people were using it to like leave the venue almost every single like group that went past commented on how cute my things were and that was the most validating and like uh i don't know i think it was just a really eye-opening experience where I I needed to hear that and I needed to feel validated in what I was doing to feel like continuing um and also like it's crazy to know that like some of my designs the ones that like I did because I had a couple designs from like I did cart heart creations like transfers I did some of her designs um, because I needed a bunch of stock to take with me but, like the ones that were mine just felt a little more personal of being like this is crazy like me like my muscle mummy t-shirt me and four other people right now are the only ones in the world that have that t-shirt and potentially only five other people will ever have it and like they're wearing my stuff like that's that's mine and they loved it enough to buy it like that is insane to me i think that is the coolest thing and i am just like it's like you're i'm proud of i'm proud of myself and i needed this because i think a lot of us that start something like this if you're not immediately or even semi-immediately uh given feedback you assume that it's not good or you did a bad you know you did whatever you did is not working uh i know it's work like this festival just affirmed with me reaffirmed with me that i can continue doing this and i want to do this because i do i like i love doing this but it got to a point where I was like, I'm spending so much money. I have so much in credit cards of like investing in myself that I, it's either I have to make money and sell this stuff or I have to quit. Uh, which is obviously like I, I told you guys why I had to do an immediate market. Like I was emailing, like I think I emailed three different markets. I was like, please like 
if you have a spot for me like this is what I sell I have very much a Halloween theme right now like fall market and the event coordinators for the one I obviously went to were so kind they're like we have um, an open spot just get your application in right now send it in because so I, I sent it in three weeks before the event which I think is rare to be allowed into something like that but they had me come and I was the only one that had uh, a booth like mine and I think that was one of the biggest reasons I had so many sales too because there weren't I walked around not a single other person that sold the stuff I was selling um, which is awesome because I kept having <laughs> college girls come in and be like this is what I wanted to see and I'm so glad you are here like I had that comment multiple times and I was like that is so sweet and everyone loved everyone came in um because they saw the clothes on the outside and immediately went to the ghost cups which is funny because I did not sell many ghost cups everyone loved them I only sold like four or five but during the event I sold 12 online so I don't know um they still loved them though. I'm still going to continue making them. I already have my Christmas design in my head. I now just need to like make it into reality. So I'm going to do that this week. I don't know if I want to do Christmas clothing. Maybe just like one small design I'm going to make a few of. Um, but I am going to sign up for another market. It was exhausting. Afterthoughts, 100% um, worth it. But it's 100% exhausting. And I don't know how you guys... Um, I watch YouTubers that go to three markets in a week. I'm literally, I'm not watching her right now because I'm in this room, but I have her on playing um, because she had like an hour long video. But she went to three markets in one week and I could not. I could not. If I do one market a month, that is a lot. <laughs> So I'm gonna try to find a Christmas market. That is my goal this week is to find a Christmas market indoors. If you're gonna do your first event, like if you could find an indoor one, I don't know how they'll work with being a festival, um, but it would have been like easier. Uh, and especially winter time, I don't think they really do many outdoor festivals, but I have no idea because I haven't looked into it. Um, I wanna find an indoor one. That is my goal. Um, but yeah, my afterthought is, if you have not done markets and you are um, needing that income because you're not getting it from online sales, absolutely right now find a market. Um, but do your research and make sure it's a market that you're going to get the people you need, whether that's families, whether that's um, like uh, like an alcoholic beverage type festival. Like know what your demographic is and find it because uh it will it will make you feel better about yourself and your brand and if you go to a market that's not like if i went to a market where i don't know like i can't think on the top of my head but if i went to one that didn't make sense for my clothing um, and i didn't make sales i probably i'm not lying i probably would have stopped i probably would have been a glass only um TikTok shop, Etsy seller, uh, and not gone to markets again. And it, I maybe would have made like a couple hundred a month. So yeah, that's my like thought process on it. I need to go grab Asher real quick. Some of the funny highlights from the event is that um, my Muscle Mommy t-shirt, I told you guys I had four people buy it. Um, I had a uh, older like mom buy one. I had a two teenage girls buy not teen, I keep saying teenage two college age girls buy one and I had a college guy buy one and in my mind because muscle mommy plays off of muscle mommy and so that's like what I made it for but like obviously a mummy is a mummy it's not a girl uh so the guy really liked it because the colors are cool and but when he bought it it made me giggle so much I'm like this is muscle mommy to me but it's not so um but the thing is like him and a, another girl go to the same gym as the um, the university's gym and I was like when the girl because the guy bought it first he was my first sale in the muscle mommy shirt um ever other than like obviously I have it um so a, the college girl bought it after I was like what gym do I go to um, and she's like uh the university's and I was like okay so I just sold this to another guy so you and him are gonna be one of like two of nine people in the world that will ever have this shirt and you go to the same gym so you're gonna see each other so please like say hi to him when you guys show up wearing the same shirt because she's like this is my new gym pump cover like this is exactly what I intended it to be so I thought that was like 
that was hilarious to me. I had my motherhood university sweatshirt. I sold two of them. One was a college age girl that had three hamsters, not a mom. She's like, I feel like a mom. <laughs> and the other was a college aged male who said, I'm just vibing with this. And I was like, I am also vibing. I know he was buying it to be ironic, like funny. But I was like, mm, take it. <laughs> like, I don't care if this is supposed to be a joke or not. Um, yeah, so those were like the funny moments. And then I, everyone was like so sweet. I was expecting a couple rude encounters and I didn't get that. I thought everyone was like wonderful. So yeah, the whole market was a success. I am so happy I did it. I'm happy I didn't let my fear kind of talk me out of doing it because like I said, um, I, I almost like, <laughs> I almost quit on us. So yeah, please, uh, if you, have questions like maybe you're new and like thinking about getting into a market if you have any questions um feel free to ask me but i think from here my plan is just to continue my tiktok shop and etsy i have um a couple listings that i haven't put up that i still need to put up online i need to do some stuff for that i need to do my christmas um cup designs i need to find a new cup vendor i think i i think what i'm gonna do um because my cups have i've gone through three different vendors so far um and they all kind of like suck so i almost quit on us i'm gonna go ahead and get one that's more expensive that does not come with lid or straws and just piece out everything individually and see if i can make it work then because i am really sick of returning cups at this point i've returned six batches and like they're not fun to return like they're heavy and I have to lug them in with this baby and I'm literally like I know people look at me like I was crazy I was like carrying uh, so many cups the last time and so today I have to return three more boxes I'm just gonna go ahead and take his little uh stroller not stroller but his wagon and it'll lug that through Kohl's to return it <laughs> because that's the drop-off point so um yeah, I look like a maniac doing that. <sighs> Anywho, um, yeah, that's everything. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I booked an appointment with my dermatologist to go into Accutane options because I'm so sick of this. And um, that will be happening in three weeks. And then I have to do an eye pledge. And I think that's a, a 30 day wait. You have to pledge to not get pregnant. And then you have to get P tested. Um, contains a whole process I looked into it when I was like 23 and I just got um, sidetracked with life and I signed the pledge or I was going to sign the pledge and then I forgot that I was going it was because like it takes a whole month <laughs> to get on Accutane and it takes many appointments so I just like didn't and I regret that and so now I'm doing it and we're gonna get clear skin finally 33 gonna get rid of this acne so i can stop complaining about it to you like why you don't want to see what's under there so now i'm leaving and i need to put my office back together because it is a mess and it's driving me crazy and we have packages to ship so that will be in another vlog though i have like 12 things to go out today